to have wall-to-wall coverage last night. Uh, former Missouri House Speaker Tim Jones was one of uh, the participants of that and helped us out with a lot of these statewide races. Tim, how are you? Mark, it's a great day to be a deplorable in America. <laughs> I uh, I was walking with a little extra spring in my step this morning, I'll have to admit. You know, I talked to Jay Ashcroft earlier, and I, I said to him, there were there was a time when when uh, some politicians in this country, and I didn't say necessarily any statewide politicians, were afraid that Donald Trump was going to be a drag on their ticket, and in the end, in Missouri, he was like a, a Hummer, and they were just hanging on for dear life. They, I mean, there's no doubt that they won by large margins because of him. Right, Mark, and remember the media and the establishment and the political class and the never Trumpers all said the same thing, right? That Donald, if you, you better not go anywhere near Donald Trump. That's going to be a big anchor. He's going to pull you down. Right. Mark, the, da- the Daily Mail out of the U.K. had a great headline going into the early wee hours of the morning when you and I were both up wrapping things up last night. And they basically said this election was a repudiation of the corruptness of the Clintons, of the failure of the elite media, the establishment, the political class, the pollsters, the pundits, and a great victory for the American people. And it really wow. was, Mark. It really was. We, I agree. We now know. We now know how many deplorables there are. You know, there's over 60 million <laughs> deplorables. Well, they're not. They're not deplorables in reality. They're Americans, and they're Americans, Mark, who said we've had enough of the Obama years of failure. And this was a Mark. This was an election on nothing more than policy. It finally got back to where it started, and it was a referendum on jobs, securing the border, and defeating ISIS. And that's it. Tim, it's, that's a great point. And I, I was going to bring this up earlier because uh, even as we speak with my uh, fingers that aren't so nimble on social media, I'm about to post a picture to the Mark Cox Show page if you're watching. If you're a Democrat and you want to feel even more lonely and isolated than you do today, look at the map that I just published on uh, my Facebook page. And it's a map that breaks down red versus blue by county in the United States of America. And you have to look to find the blue on that map. I mean, it is. It, th- this was a widespread victory, even though I understand that the, you know, if you look at the, at the actual vote, Hillary Clinton might have actually come out a couple of votes ahead. But as, as Al Gore knows, that doesn't really matter because a lot of those votes come from California and New York and these population centers. Right, Mark. And, you know, we're on our what? This will be our 40, what, 5th president, I believe, 45th, 46th. Uh, this has happened five times before, you know. And so percentage-wise, it's not like it's, a, it's an anomaly that never happens. It can happen. Now, look at where that – you're right. I've seen that map. That is a dramatic map. And I <laughs> urge is. all the listeners to go look at the map, the county map, of how the country is truly divided. And where, where is the blue? Well, number one, the blue has become very blue. It's become – it, there, there is no light blue anymore in this country. If you're no. blue, you're, a pro, you're, you're basically deep progressive left wing. I'm not talking about the independents, the people who they may split their ticket, vote for a Republican, vote for a Democrat. I'm talking about the straight, far left wing, dyed in the wool Democrats who are all left wing blue now. You're clustered around the urban areas. Well, what is the commonality there? The commonality is there is the government basically tries – not, not successfully usually, tries to tell you they're going to do everything for you. They're going to provide your transportation. They're going to provide your, your food. They're going to provide all your entitlements. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. They're going to do everything. And so that's where that's clustered. Whereas the rest of the country, where the small business owners are, the people who actually employ 80 to 90 percent of Americans, they're out there living that American dream independently and as much freedom as they still can. Those were the people that rose up. A lot of laborers, a lot of union folks, a lot of black, more blacks voted for Trump than Romney, more Hispanics voted for Trump than Romney. Mark, all of the talking points that we kept hearing, they were all wrong. This was an election for all of America, and America stood up and spoke out very loudly. Tim, uh, the, the statewide races, um, they, they called the governor's race much earlier than I would have expected looking at the Secretary of State's website, but clearly they had some internal numbers that showed there's no way that uh, Chris Coster could could catch up with what Eric Greitens had, had assembled. And, and again, I, I'm guessing a lot of that probably came from the outpouring of support for Trump. 
That's correct. So, Mark, yesterday on the, uh, the Almond Report on the television show, and folks can go back and look at what I said, I made a prediction that if Trump surged, which I felt he was, I felt he was surging, I did not, I did not adopt any of the mainstream talking points uh, this election cycle. And they were basically saying that with the Comey announcement, you know, the re-announcement, that everything was going to stop for Trump and he was going to tread water. I didn't believe that. I believe the Comey announcement actually gave people more energy because it really proved that – you know, the deck is stacked against the ordinary, ordinary everyday American wall as the Clintons can get away with anything. I said yesterday that if we got to 15 to 19, 15 to 20 points, that that would be a, that would be a Republican landslide in Missouri and everybody would win. Trump got to 19 points. And that's what happened. And that's right. why they were able to call that, because they were looking at where the remaining votes were, and they realized there was no way Chris Koster could make up the gap, along with all of the other statewide that, w- that won, including Senator Roy Blunt, who looks like he will be the 52nd senator in the U.S. Senate. Yeah, that that was uh, a, a, sigh, a sigh of relief. You know, I, I said this morning, uh, half jokingly, because I understand how important the, it is for us to have control of the Senate. But in light of what happened yesterday and the repudiation it was to the establishment, I would love to see people like John Kasich and uh, and uh, Lindsey Graham and and maybe even John McCain and Kelly Ayotte just <laughs> resign. You should resign in embarrassment over the way you treated Donald Trump uh, leading up to this election. Well, Mark, you're right, because what do they have to offer the American people? These are people, everybody you mentioned has been in politics for a very long time. In some cases, decades. They've they've held multiple offices. And, you know, there was a time where I respected and, and, and looked for to hear them say things on tax cuts and reforms and so on and so forth. But some of these folks have overstayed their welcome. And what do they have to offer? There's a reason, Mark, that the congressional approval rating is in the low teens, if that. Right. I speak, it's because despite the fact they're all incumbents and they all get reelected because it's the power of incumbency and the power of money, they go up there and they fail to act for the people. They promise and promise and promise. And it's not that they, you know, there's some things I understand. I've been in the legislature. I know there's some things that are impossible. But when it doesn't look like you're even trying, that's where people get frustrated and upset. And Donald Trump has said, you know what, the only way to fix this is to completely up into the apple cart with someone who is not beholden to anyone. Donald Trump is not doing this for money. He's not doing this for fame. He's not doing this to curry favor with anyone. It's because he's an American who loves America, who's been blessed by America, and he wants to do what he can to set up that opportunity of prosperity that he enjoys for future generations like my children, who I now wake up. This is a new dawn for me. I'm so, I'm so thrilled today, Mark. And the Supreme <laughs> Court, which we haven't even touched upon, it is a very different day today on the, with the Supreme oh. Court potential nominees than if Hillary Clinton had been at the helm. I am very confident now that the next generation on the Supreme Court, the rulings for the people will be secure. I, I it feel like a load was lifted off my shoulders when that realization hit me last night. Uh, let, let's look ahead for just a minute because we talked uh, yesterday, I think it might have been, it's all a blur now, about the fact that you used to be a prosecutor, right? Um, I did. And, and somebody asked me earlier, do you think that that Donald Trump's going to take office and then tell the Justice Department to pursue this case against the Clintons. And I'm like, well, I don't know if he will or not, but I think that if he appoints an attorney general like Rudy Giuliani or maybe Chris Christie, uh, I could see them telling the FBI, let's ease off the email investigation because she's a private citizen again and she can't do any more damage than she's already done. But go full steam ahead on that foundation because it looks like there's some racketeering and all that. I don't think there's any reason the FBI should back off if if there's indictable crimes involving that foundation. You know, Mark, I, I could kind of see that. And, you know, let, let me give, I will, you know, I, unlike some of my favorite left-wing liberals on my troll patrol on my Twitter feed, I do give some credit to the other side from time to time where credit is due. And I thought Hillary Clinton gave a very gracious concession speech today. I was actually fairly impressed. I thought Obama rambled and wandered a bit and didn't give a very good speech, but I thought Hillary Clinton gave a decent speech. And so, you know, we do need to, we do need to have some healing now. And I also thought Donald Trump gave... That was an excellent speech last night that we all heard at 3 in the morning. Uh, that was fantastic. The tone, the delivery, the substance, well done. What, great way to start. Sure. And so, you know, on the personal issue with the emails, you know, 
if, if a horrible crime was done against the government, uh, the investigation should continue. But you know, if it's if if it's a close call, like like Comey keeps saying, Comey keeps saying, well, there was all this really, 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 really bad stuff, but a prosecutor with their discretion would not proceed on this. Okay, you make a prosecutor's discretionary call, you let it go. But Mark, on the foundation, that is very troubling. If there were quid pro quos, if there was money exchanged for the for access to the highest levels of our government, and if that access then influenced things that happened, and if Americans' lives were put at risk, if any of those things happened, I, you you need to you need to one of the reasons you pursue crime and seek justice is so people in the future don't think they can just get away with anything they want to. Right. Right, and and the, the problem is these people have gotten away with it for far too long, haven't they? That that's the craw, that's what sticks in my craw over the whole thing. Tim, I got I got to run. Listen, I appreciate your time. Thanks for your analysis last night and again today. Mark, excellent job, you guys. You guys were in the studio all night last night. Great job into the early wee hours of the morning. Impressive <laughs> election coverage. I don't think anybody could have gotten anything close to it anywhere else. So hopefully they were, they will, they have listened and will continue to listen to FM News Talk ninety seven one. And uh, thanks for having me on. Hey Tim, we'll uh, we'll listen to you Friday, right? That's right. I'll awesome. be in the big chair for you. Absolutely, yeah. sir. Thank you. I look forward to it. Thanks for yeah. helping out. Thanks, all right. Yep. Uh, the speaker Tim Jones, a former House Speaker, is going to be filling in for me on uh, Friday when I uh, have to take the day off. Um, 